there seems to be a greater focus on keeping employees happy at work these days. There's more and more uh, perks, like unlimited vacation and free meals throughout the week, and that is just to start. But can this have an impact on productivity, and will it ultimately help or hurt the company's bottom line? Joining us now, Cy Wakeman, author of No Ego, um, and president and founder of Reality Based Leadership. So your book seems to take a direct jab. Thank you, by the way, for joining us. Absolutely. It's good to be here. Your book seems to take a direct jab at some of these workplaces that seem to be catering perhaps to millennials. Uh, what, what did you find? I found that our current leadership focus on engagement without accountability is actually creating entitlements. And so I love engagement, and when it meets high accountables, it's a sweet spot. But unfortunately, we're trying to buy people's love and what people don't realize is that your happiness isn't about your circumstances. It's correlated to the amount of accountability you take for your circumstances. So we think we're helping, and many times it's actually hurting. But at the same time, I mean, the argument could be made for, for certain perks, like maybe free meals. And this is, of course, the idea that I think a lot of companies have uh, are really twofold. One is increases productivity because, you know, you don't end up leaving the office uh, uh, to go and get a meal. And two, it helps attract and retain talent. But, but you're saying that's not enough. It's not enough, and when those things are used on high accountables, they do exactly that. What we're trying to do, though, is use engagement to drive performance, and most of what we're doing, I have found in my research, is actually fueling drama or emotional waste in the workplace. So the same behavior won't please a high accountable and a low accountable at the same time. And so it's really about discernment, not about trying to buy everyone's love, because if you're low in accountability, no matter what I give you, is it going to change the mental process you use at work? And that's really where emotional waste and drama come from. Wait, I love that. So I think you said that there's about two and a half hours a day that workers are spending on drama. Yeah, it was so crazy. What, what does that even mean? What, define that. So I'm a drama researcher, and I want to help companies really quantify how much waste there is in the workplace. We looked at manufacturing floor. We looked at throughput. But no one's looking at emotional waste and drama. And so we researched how much drama there is in the workplace, two and a half hours per day per employee. What, what is this drama? What is drama? Yeah. drama? What is your so definition of drama? We call it um, emotional waste and the unproductive thought pattern or disruptive behavior that takes away from results, which also takes away from workplace happiness, i.e. engagement. But drama, the sources of drama are ego, gossiping, um, tattling, scorekeeping, judging, uh, resisting change, withholding buy-in basically being unwilling to align where the organization needs to go and withholding your input that you've been paid to, to give. So a great example is a lot of people think their opinion will add value, but opinions are used to stop the action. It's your expertise that will add value. So if you start a sentence out with no and here's why, you're already stopping the action. If you start out with yes and let me use my expertise to help you accomplish this, that's where I can really add value. It's a whole different mindset in the workplace. So, so what are some uh, tips that you have for, for managers who, who want to avoid these types of situations, these ego-driven behaviors, and of course, the drama in the workplace? They really have a key role to play. We can recapture 816 hours per person per year. Wow. And what we've taught leaders to date is actually fueling the drama. Traditional leadership philosophy, keeping an open door, allowing people to vent, really is allowing the ego to flourish. And so once you realize the ego is out to play a lot at work, the role of a leader isn't to inspire or motivate. It's really to help people bypass the ego and use good mental processes to deliver emotional waste. So their main role, um, to answer your question, is to bypass the ego using questions for self-reflection. So if you came to me and you are furious about what John and your workplace did, my job as a leader is not to let you vent and judge. It's to bypass your ego and get you to a part of your brain that's self-reflecting and just to say, what can you do to help? And you can't vent and self-reflect at the same time. In fact, venting is the ego's way of avoiding self-reflection. So I can get you back to accountability by getting you self-reflecting and helping you realize that your reality isn't the source of your suffering. It's the story you made up about your reality. I love it. It's like those those I statements that, you know, when you grow up Basic with that your stuff. mom your, you know, my mom would always tell me, like, you know, tell me to say like it hurts my feelings when you do that. <laughs> right, right, yeah. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, this thank you. That's Cy Wakeman, author of No Ego and President and Founder of Reality Based Leadership, joining us live here on Cheddar from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange.